I'm getting it on videotape. Shh, shh. I was eight years old when George Holliday woke to the sound of helicopters, grabbed his new video camera, and started recording the scene outside. Shows what appears to be a group of LAPD officers beating a suspect. I was too young to see the Rodney King tape when it first aired on the news, but I was old enough to witness the video's impact in the months and years that followed. There is a new weapon being used in the war on crime, and it's called a home video camera. In this video age, more and more people own video cameras, and they're carrying them around with them for the purpose of shooting possible news footage. Not guilty of the crime of assault by... Even as a child, that verdict didn't seem right. If I go into a store on videotape and steal a Twinkie, I'm going to jail for six months, okay? You got four guys on videotape, obviously, savagely beating someone, and they get off. I'm black, they're white. You know, what's happening here? These officers have a job to do and in doing that job they have to be given a certain amount of reasonable and that's what this is you know reasonable force i'm here to tell this jury no no our eyes did not deceive us we saw what we saw and what we saw was a crime the los angeles basin is beginning to look like kuwait after dark with fires and looting breaking out as far north as hollywood and moving west toward beverly hills watching the la riots on tv i knew i was witnessing history it seemed george holiday's tape had changed everything and sent the message that the world really is watching but almost 20 years later just as cell phone video is beginning to become ubiquitous another police encounter one even more shocking than rodney king was captured on video This is the Fruitvale BART station at 2 a.m. New Year's Day, as captured on video by 19-year-old Karina Vargas. At least four different people with cell phone cameras shot video of Grant and two other men surrounded by transit police after an alleged fight on a subway train. Vargas says it is something that she wishes she had not seen, but says the truth and video should come out. This video is for everyone and to see. I, I want to show it to his family. I hope his family sees this. It's for everyone to see that it was not right. Once again, I was stunned by the jury's verdict. Although the officer was found guilty this time, the jury convicted Johannes Meserly of only involuntary manslaughter, and the judge sentenced him to just two years in prison. Just as Oakland had erupted in riots after the video first surfaced, news of the verdict and sentencing also ignited a public uprising. But what if every police encounter was captured on camera? Could technology transform a troubled police force into a squad of model officers? The city of Oakland is trying to find out. The Oakland Police Department is seeking approval for, uh, to award a contract with uh, Adamson Industry to purchase 350 Byview portable cameras along with the uh, supporting equipment. And they fit right on the front of the officer's uniform. The officer turns them on and off with the click of a button and the officers are required to wear them whenever they're in the field. I brought one with me today if you're interested in looking at it. Uh, they're, they're quite small. A lot of times when an officer is accused of something, uh, the community doesn't feel comfortable with the officer's side of the story. So the cameras can tell the perfect story. It tells exactly what happened. It could also provide evidence of criminal, uh, I'm sorry, crimes or attacks against officers, streamline the truth-finding process by providing the I, best I, evidence. I, I think that's, we have some people, so I think we can, thank you. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, move and second question, Mr. Delafonte. Real, real, just a quick question. And you finalizing the policy on, on the use of the equipment and all of that, and that's coming back to public safety and to the city council. Like Councilman De La Fuente, I too wanted to find out more about this program. And I was able to set up a ride along with one of the officers who was testing out the new cameras. Yes. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey, All right, what I'm going to do, I need to go back here and get us a car. Right. Well, Officer Jason Scott, Oakland Police Department. I actually work in the traffic operations section. I don't think that I have a problem with communicating with people, but if I were to have any problems, 
I think that the camera would speak for it, speak for it not only itself, but me also, in showing that, you know, I, I didn't do anything wrong. If a citizen flags down a police officer and asks for directions or asks you to sign off a ticket or something along those lines, you don't have to turn it on. But if it's any time where you are, as a police officer, detaining someone and actually they're not free to leave, then we require you to turn it on. During the 50s, Oakland became a stagnant, seething ghetto of impoverished blacks and Chicanos surrounded by the white affluence of the Oakland Hills and suburban Alameda County. To contain the misery and violence of the ghetto, Oakland's all-white police department earned a reputation for head-knocking brutality that has left a well-remembered legacy of bitterness in the minds and hearts of many who lived in that time and place. I'm from Oakland. My entire family is still in Oakland. I'm from deep East Oakland, so um, I understand the community's feelings about the police as well. There has been times where officers have done stuff that's terrible to people, that they have no business doing to people. So. We understand the history in Oakland, um, especially when it, it comes to the Oakland Police Department and a lot of the residents here. It's been a very tumultuous history. Today, there is a whole new relationship developing between the people of Oakland's ghettos and the police. We're working really hard every single day to overcome some of the things that come along with that history. What's up, man? You have some tension. It's not going to change that. But it might help people feel at ease knowing that officers are being recorded so that they'll be on their best behavior. What are you doing? Enjoying your vacation? Yeah. Ready to go back to school? In the city of Oakland at this point, we're, we're, we're not allowed to give you, per se, a verbal warning, meaning, hey, just don't do it again and, and leave. Once we stop somebody, we have to have documentation of that stop. You can do a field contact on the computer, or you write that person a citation. Come on. I'm in Berkeley now at Alcatraz and Adeline. Two X-ray George Henry, 247, a white Toyota. Driven by a male white in his 20s, he stopped for speeding. Go for it. Hi, sir. Hi, 41 and a 25. Oh my goodness, can I, can I please tell you? Uh, Do me a favor first. See that car on the, part behind that, so we're out of the road. Well, this is the one was walking back up and he's already getting ready to say something. You're gonna don't don't stop. You tell him, don't you're gonna let me talk or you do you you're gonna get the break you were asking for. You're gonna get you're gonna fix a ticket for not having your reg in the vehicle warrant for speed. So you don't get no points in your record. Thank you so much, much appreciated and I will slow down. Okay. Hey, what else You know, a lot of people have negative view of the police. So if I was to give you a break, I can do something that, that can help to ease your mind as far as some of the, the negativity that, that you may, may or may not have. Where's your new camera? I missed it. So whenever you uh, can have, make contact with anyone, you take a picture of it? No, this video takes a video. It's recording us in video right oh, now. Oh, it's recording us? Mm -hmm. Some people have asked, hey man, is that the camera? So some people do. And, and some people, I don't know if they don't notice because you have so much equipment on. Why don't you tell them that you have a camera running? I didn't know I had to. And you don't have no, to. That's why I don't. There's no real expect expectation of privacy, you know, out here in the streets. Another one of the big reasons why is because you notice when, when she saw that you were recording, the first question was, what's he doing with that camera? So. You know, I don't want the camera to be the reason that somebody starts, you know, not being so nice to me. The only thing that we had concern about is the fact that they only hold four hours worth of tape. So there is going to be a time period during the officer's shift where the officer has to come back to upload the videos. So that is a minor concern. It does take away that officer from being out on the street and answering calls for service. At the very least, you probably spin at least about a, a good um, hour. There's no way. So we sit here all day and 
view all, all of these videos. There's just no way. Okay, here she is. I'm insured with the uh, Mercury insurance. So where's your camera? I missed it. So whenever you uh, can have, make contact with anyone, you take a picture of them? No, this video it takes a video. It's recording us on oh, video right now. Oh, it's recording us on video. That's great. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. Where are you? That's great for uh, evidence purposes. But actually, I don't. I really don't. You're getting a fix a for red, not having your current ridge. That's it. I'm not giving you speedy. Thank you. I try. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, though. Uh, well, no. But outside of the Oakland Police Department, not all officers are quite as open to being filmed as William Kilgore and his friend Thomas Frain discovered when they tried to record a traffic stop in Tarpon Springs, a small town about an hour north of Tampa. Hey, how you doing? Good. good. How you doing, Ian? I'm doing wonderful. That's My good. My name's Officer Swatala with Tarpon Springs Police Department. Hi. Here's doing? the deal. You've been videotaping us? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. What you just videotaped was this officer receiving consent to search that person. Okay. okay. At which time he found a felony amount of a controlled substance. Okay. Really? Okay. okay. Yes. okay. Which makes your video camera evidence now. So I'm going to request the videotape out of your camera. If you don't give it to me, you'll be arrested for obstruction. If it's on someone's personal camera, uh, you can ask them to give it to you or to turn it in. I don't know that I'm able to just take your phone from you unless it's evidence of a crime that you were involved in. Do you have the Tarpon Springs police number? When Kilgore refused to hand his camera over to the officer, the police arrested him. If I start demanding names and holding people there, it turns into a detention and it's illegal detention, right? So we can get into legal problems. I don't think there's any questions now uh, that what the Tarpon Springs police did was wrong. Pinellas State Attorney Bernie McCabe apparently agrees. His office refused to prosecute Kilgore, who resisted turning over his video camera and tape. Citizens can film the police whenever they want. You might not be able to film certain things, but I don't think that this should be time where you're just prohibited from, from recording, period. Recruits, <laughs> you might remember me from the Rodney King proceedings. All right, students, select the most dangerous suspect. No, 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 he's no threat. Hold your fire. What about him? Not this time. Believe me, there's a much bigger threat to the men in blue. That's him. Kill the bastard with the video camera. Take him out and you can waste everybody else at your own leisure. Congratulations, students. You've passed the court. Hey, 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 get, hey get the fuck out of here! Get out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Go, go, fuck you. I'm gonna ask you what's on, guys. Go. But even in Oakland, where the police film you, officers can still stop people from recording them. This is what happened when ABC cameraman Doug Laughlin tried to film outside the hospital after four officers were killed in a shootout. It's not, it's not, it's not. Please It's leave. not important right now. You are interfering with the crime scene. I will place I, you under arrest. Leave, I'm gonna have leave. to make my you stand. You don't understand. Leave. I'm gonna have to make my stand here, guys. That uh, particular incident is in litigation. Uh, we're not allowed legally to comment on anything that is in litigation. So in California, we can legally record the police, and if they try to stop us, we can always sue. But in Illinois, a Chicago artist is facing prison time for having an audio recorder running while he was arrested. Well, last December, my crew and I, I had uh, a photographer who's an artist and a, uh, another videographer who's an artist uh, come out with me to State Street. We were simply uh, there pre-Christmas rush, selling art for a dollar, you know, and offering it to people around. Uh, for years, we've been giving it away because it's illegal for us to sell in that spot. So we decided to test this uh, law called the Peddler's License in Chicago by selling the art in public and uh, went out there to do that and I was arrested. And uh, I expected to be out in four hours. They didn't let me out in four hours. They took me to County uh, Cook County Jail uh, in the morning and uh, uh, I gave me papers that said I was charged with two counts of 
a misdemeanor, selling art in public, and, and one first-class felony for eavesdropping. And then I realized I was in a much different position than I had expected. The law has two different categories. There's a misdemeanor offense for anybody who uh, records a normal person's conversation. And then there's an enhanced penalty for somebody who records a conversation between himself and a, either a police officer, a state's attorney, or a judge. The officer's privacy while well, he's in public on duty is fictitious. He has no privacy. The state themselves record him during his duties. We believe that not only does the First Amendment protect your right to speak, but it also protects your right to listen and hear. And one of the elements of hearing, uh, in this case, is recording. Um, but the judge didn't agree with us, and so now we have to go to trial. It's possible I could be sentenced to 15 years. That's the maximum. Uh, the minimum is four, but the judge could decide that I had a good record and never been in front of the police before or had any problems and decide to give me probation. And you never know, this is Chicago, Cook County, they could do anything. See, the thing I don't, won't allow is for them to frighten me, you know? I mean, uh, they, we have to fight for our rights in this country. People think that we're given rights by the First Amendment and, and the Constitution, but that's the, that's the biggest confusion in this country. We have to fight for every right that we have today, we have fought for, has been fought for in the street by people. Free art? Everyone's different. Thank you. All right, by many different Chicago artists. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. The ability to record your public officials in public is one of the tools you must have because when you go to court and they ask you for the evidence, you have to produce some. If you say, well, uh, I seem to remember uh, that the policeman said, uh, and the policeman said, I didn't say that. Who are they going to believe? No law in Illinois restricts videotaping anything that happens on the public way. In Chicago, we have 10,000 cameras that are recording, you know, police cameras that are recording actions on the public way. They're all permissible. But these surveillance cameras do not record audio, and the law only applies to sound. So although Chris had only a digital recorder running, he could have been facing the same charges had he instead used his cell phone to videotape the police. No one from either the state's attorney's office or the police department would talk to me about the legality of recording the police. So after dropping Chris off at his house, we decided to record the cops in his neighborhood to see what would happen. At first, the police ignored us. But when someone in a car the police had pulled over started talking to us, the officers decided to intervene. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, is it, do I have the right to record in public? Yes. Can you guys turn it on for a second? I want to speak with you. After I turned off the camera, the police informed me that under a new law, it's illegal to film the police. They refused to say it on camera. And Chris Drew isn't the only one in trouble for recording the police. In fact, prosecutors in at least three states, Illinois, Maryland, and Massachusetts, are using the existing eavesdropping laws to file felony charges against people for making similar recordings. But even when the police are recorded, sometimes the video that can reveal what happened is kept from the public. After leaving Chicago, I went to Detroit to meet up with Charlie LaDuff, a reporter who covered a story involving a police shooting that was captured on video. Ianna Jones was a seven-year-old girl sleeping on a couch in a very rough section of a very rough city. A murderer was upstairs, a man wanted for murder, friends with her father. Grandma was on the couch, they were watching TV, and outside TV was watching them. For homicide detectives, the clock starts ticking the moment they are called. The first 48's about um, homicide investigations. It's filmed all over Detroit, Miami, they had, um, Harris County, Texas is on there quite a bit. Their chance of solving a murder 
is cut in half. We're pretty stuck unless somebody comes and cooperates with us. If they don't get a lead within the first 48 hours. I think I heard about it. I didn't see a sh first 48 show about it. Well, it was about hour 34. So let me ask you, why don't they wait till the morning when a guy's going to the liquor store to get his uh, quart of milk for his kid? Why did they do that? Because they got to make it in 48? It's hard for me to say because I don't know, you know, wh what really went on in Detroit. The police threw a flashbang grenade inside. I don't know why. The street lights were out, I'm told. <sighs> Atlanta's so close to the girl that it singed her blanket. Three seconds later, she's dead and a cop's crying because a bullet was discharged from a gun. Did TV kill this girl? I don't know. But they were right along with them. That was over nine months ago. We still have no official document as to what went on. We still don't know. But there's a tape floating around. The gentleman who has the video, I would hope that your fear of the Detroit Police Department and your fear that something will happen to you does not in any way, shape, or form override the needs of this family and the need of this community for justice. Although the producers for the first 48 have turned over their tapes to law enforcement, the videos have not been released publicly and the officer involved in the shooting is still on the city's payroll. I'm for the press, man, and the press works for the people. And the people have a right to know and they need to know. That's how a democracy works. The point of the camera is to not blink and to remind them and we want it fixed, and we want some things changed. But in my experience, what will happen is that the Detroit Police Department will go into court and seek a restraining order preventing me from playing it for you, saying that it's too inflammatory and it'll prejudice their right to a fair trial, and blah, 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 blah. People don't read. They, if they see it, they go, oh, my god. We never saw anything, right? We get some grainy photo from grade school from the kid. So it's almost sort of. You know how it works in America, man. If it's not on tape, it doesn't exist. If it's not on tape, it doesn't exist. While Oakland's camera program holds out promises to ensure police will act professionally, will people be allowed to see how the police behave, or will the footage remain hidden like the tape of the Ayanna Jones shooting? The purpose is many purposes. The first one being uh, transparency within the community. A lot of times when an officer is accused of something, the community doesn't feel comfortable with the officer's side of the story, so the cameras can tell the perfect story. It tells exactly what happened. I think they are public records. I don't think there's any, the way the Public Records Act in California works is that everything is presumed to be, every government record is presumed to be a public record unless it falls into one of the exceptions. No, I don't believe that citizens are allowed to review the video, no. What the Public Records Act says specifically is that dispatch records, records of the police responding to calls for assistance, things like that are public records. And, and I believe that, that because these are not specifically excluded from the Public Records Act, that they should be treated like a, an, any other public record. But even though the police allowed us to record the screen while Officer Scott played back his footage from the day, when I filed a public records request, the city attorney refused to release the video citing the exemption that allows police to keep their investigations private. The videos are always evidence. But if the city of Oakland will cite that exemption for video of even a traffic stop, then is this program really about police transparency? I hope these cameras, all this stuff we're talking about with the police and the communities, it's to help. If it helps, okay. Something tells me it's not help. So if these are public records, how can we ensure the public has access to see them? The only way to enforce the Public Records Act is to file a lawsuit. You'd have to file a lawsuit challenging the assertion of that exemption. But even without access to the videos shot by the police themselves, people like George Holliday and countless others will continue to help ensure our police are held accountable. Knowing what you do now, would you still have shot the video? on March 3rd, 1991, or hearing all the sirens, hearing the copter, mm -hmm. seeing the lights, would you have just rolled over and gone back to bed? No, I'd, I'd, I'd do it again. We're fighting for your loved ones to be able to flip open that cell phone and, and record that action against them. Somebody needs that right. If you don't think you need it, somebody you know knows they need it. Get off the motorcycle. Get off.
the motorcycle. State police. 